Welcome to the Viewport tutorial. This tutorial will introduce you to the Viewport panel, where you can preview your scene and animation, select and move actors, control the camera, etc. We'll start with the camera controls. To control the Viewport camera, press and hold the right mouse button, which will enable FPS-style controls. As long as you hold down the button, you can rotate the camera by moving the mouse and move the camera using WASD. You can move faster or slower by holding down the Shift or Alt key, respectively. You can also change the field of view using the scroll wheel. Try moving around in the scene until you find the character sitting in the chair in the dining room. To select the character, you can either click them directly or click and hold the left mouse button to create a rectangular selection. Note how, other than the character in the chair, no other objects in this scene are selectable. This is because they are part of the map, and map objects cannot be selected or edited. Select the character to continue. You can tell which objects are selected by the yellow outline around them. If the selected object is a character, you can also hover over the character's body parts to highlight the character's bones. Clicking the character again will select that bone in the actor editor, you can also right-click the character to perform various actions on it, but we'll go into more detail on that in another tutorial. Below the viewport, you can find the manipulator controls, which can be used to move, rotate, or scale selected actors, bones, etc. You can hover over each control to see its function and keyboard shortcut. Click on the Move manipulator to continue. Now try moving the actor to the marked spot on the chair in the living room using the transform gizmo. You can follow the red dashed line to find it. Next, switch to the rotate manipulator and rotate the actor so that they are facing the table. You can toggle the transform space between world, local, and screen space by pressing the move or rotate manipulator multiple times. Alternatively, you can also change the transform space in the viewport settings to the right. In addition, you can also enable snap to grid to make it easier to align objects. You can click these buttons to increase the positional or rotational grid size or hold the Alt key to decrease it. Another feature to keep in mind is the Live RT option. With this option, you can enable or disable real-time ray tracing for the viewport. This can be useful to get a quick preview of what your scene will look like with baked light maps, or in case you plan on using the Cycles X renderer to render your scene. Try enabling it now. Please note that PFM may appear frozen for a short time after enabling it. As long as the Live RT mode is active, you can still move the camera, but some actions, like adding or removing actors, will not be visible until the mode is deactivated. You will see some use cases in later tutorials, but let's deactivate it for now. Over here, you can find the camera controls. Using these controls, you can toggle between the work and scene camera or change the scene camera to a different one. Switch to the scene camera by pressing the button that says Work Camera to continue. Finally, these are the playback controls. Here you can view your animation frame by frame or in real time by pressing the play button. You can hover over each button to see its function and keyboard shortcut. Press the play button to continue. This concludes the tutorial on the viewport. You can now end the tutorial or press the continue button to start the next tutorial in this series.